Hello, David here at merchantaccounts.ca with another episode of the Vlogcast. Today on the, I'm talking to Vadim Gurevich and Vlad Malyshev, the current owners and minds behind OS Commerce. I should say OS Commerce version 4, which is a complete ground up rebuild of one of the absolute most popular open source e-commerce platforms of all time. Guys, thanks for joining today. Well, thank you, David. It's very nice to be here on your vlog. And uh, well, I just hope it's not as hot over there as it is here today. Um, we in Britain just enjoying the very hot summer today. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I think fortunately, it's the hot summer for OS Commerce as well because we're just about to launch a new version. Hi David, awesome. nice to meet you. Uh, what I spoke with you previously. It's my first time when I speak to you. And thank you very much uh, to introducing me and for inviting us to your blog. Perfect. Now there's a lot to cover today and I'm just curious, how do you end up rebuilding what is essentially one of the most popular e-commerce platforms of all time? How did this happen? Um, it's really good and interesting question. We are working with OS Commerce for 22 years uh, right now and um, since let's say some time uh, the main uh, direct OS Commerce version 2.2 uh, it became unattended. <laughs> Unfortunately, previous uh, code owner he stopped to support OS Commerce at all and uh, what we have done, we just try to give him another chance. So we start to work uh, to create modern, best, whatever system we can do. And uh, why we can do that? Because we're working with a lot of different uh, big brands and we have our own uh, platform. So we created uh, this platform seven years ago, something like that. And then we decided why this platform should not go to everyone, why everyone cannot use it. And the answer was really easy. It should be. I would just like to add that um, it's, it's more about, it's just more about change in life and business why things change, why things get reinvented, redone, rebuilt, because the time has passed and the old software, same as some old furniture, needs to be replaced with something new. Um, OS Commerce as such has been going for 20 something years. 20 years ago it was a great tool, amazing tool, even 10 years ago it was still something valuable. <clears throat> Never since then a major upgrade was, uh, was released. So if you think about this, 10 years in software development is like, I don't know, it's like a millennia perhaps in human life, isn't it? So um, you can't possibly expect um, a decent business to use a piece of software which is 10 years old, a piece of software that is responsible for your online sales. And we know that online sales is the, well, is the majority of sales in any business now, isn't it? So um, we just... Definitely. We just have to uh, offer something new to the users of OS Commerce, being it merchants, being it developers, something new, something um, more interesting, faster, more secure, something more 2022 rather than the year 2000 or the year 2010. That's why. Right. That, that makes sense. And so are there still people using the old version today? Absolutely. 46 or 48,000 installations across the globe. Half of this or 40% well, of this is in the US and then comes Germany, Netherlands, uh, the UK, France and um, loads of other countries. There's a big, a, big, a, a big community, a big community of users and developers. So to me then, and one of the obvious use cases is to take those people running the legacy OS commerce and get them on the new version then. Absolutely, that's the intention. That's phase number one, or maybe phase point half, I don't know. <coughs> it's uh, one of the first tasks that we have planned out is to offer upgrades to those uh, who still have a business running all those commerce. 
Well, I'm very curious about that because upgrading anything is always a bit of a challenge. And obviously anybody running OS Commerce who's probably very excited by the potential, the concern that's probably whispering in their ear, it's like, how hard is this gonna be? Can you address uh, how, you know, how easy or difficult it would be to perform that upgrade? It's, uh, you know, it depends on what uh, shop is that. So if this is, um, I didn't want to say basic uh, website, but not really updated one, it's just a couple of days. But if this is a big portal with huge amount of customization, then yes, it will be um, some time to do that. But for most uh, cases, it's just a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks if we're really busy. But, but uh, we have some partners who can do this for our clients as well. So That's what I was about to ask. So if people want to outsource it, like, hey, I want to run the new version, but I don't want the headache. Can you guys do it? Or, or, or can you connect me with someone that can take care of this or gu at least guide us through this process? Uh, exactly, it's, it's both. So um, we, uh, as a company, we're working with big brands again, as I said previously, and uh, we know how to move big projects, big uh, portals from one source to another one. Uh, on the other hand, there are a lot of small shops what can be moved as well. So we have partners who can help with smaller projects. So for everyone who wants to move from older version to newest one, it's a bit not waiting in a queue for ages. <laughs> well, it depends okay. really, because we're talking about thousands and thousands, but we obviously appreciate that um, something new can be a bit scary as well. People are used, uh, it doesn't work, it's laggy, it's old, uh, it's not safe, but people are used to it. So we understand the sentiment, but the necessity, the business necessity is there. The, uh, the old OS commerce needs to go. If uh, businesses choose to go elsewhere, choose Shopify, choose, I don't know, Magenta or something else, by all means. But if they choose to stay with OS commerce, we we'll offer them a new version of OS commerce, which is true. It's not exactly the old OS commerce sort of enhanced or upgraded. No, it's done from scratch. But that from scratch is, is, is inspired by many years of using exactly OS Commerce. It, it was done by us, by the company called Hobey. And uh, Hobey was a partner, um, supporter, contributor, sponsor, whatever we call this, of all OS Commerce for almost 20 years. So everything that new OS Commerce is, is based on our experience developing using all those commerce and on our experience developing our system, which was inspired by it. Right. So it's it's a it's a total rewrite, but but with all of the knowledge from many Absolutely. years of running. So I guess, but it's like a spiritual successor from the sound yes, of it. Yes, that, that's a good commerce. one. I like it. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the spirit yeah. of ice commerce is yet in Liv lives form. on. It lives on. <laughs> Now to any of our viewers watching this, one of the things that I do wanna make everyone aware of is that a lot of the team at OS Commerce are based in Ukraine. And guys, I wanna give you a chance to talk a little bit about what has been going on and what you've had to deal with and you know the, the situation there. If you don't mind, Vlad, I'll start and then you'll continue to give them some real piece oh. of advice. <laughs> um, Historically, uh, we've all lived, or we had all lived in Ukraine. I'm from Ukraine, from Kharkiv, uh, Vlad uh, from Don Donbass region, from Khorlovka, and uh, pretty much all of us, all of our colleagues as well. I moved to the UK in 2005, so I've been living here for 17 years. However, obviously I would make a visit to Ukraine three, four times a year. Uh, my dad used to live in Ukraine, and my friends, my business partner, and my colleagues, my relatives, well, a lot. Um, when we conceived the idea of buying OS Commerce, well, we had a situation in Ukraine with Russia occupying part of it uh, in the east and Crimea, but for us it wasn't too bad. I mean. 
Um, however, many things changed, and as we were just about to launch, because we were planning to launch in the uh, middle of March, uh, this version 4 was going to be launched in the middle of, of March, came the 24th of February, and um, a full-scale unjust um, criminal invasion of Russia in Ukraine started and it changed many lives or it ended many lives as well but it changed many lives and it changed our plans as well we watched our people had to move some had to move outside of the country uh, some women with children left uh, men had to stay by law, but had to relocate. Vlad is one of the very few that actually stayed in Kharkiv, which is closer to the front line, and his own house was pretty much destroyed by several missile attacks. I don't know why they keep, well, they kept sending missiles to destroy a particular house, but still. Um, so, so, so it doesn't like those corners. Exactly. <laughs> but um, and that's one of the reasons why we are now in July and uh, are launching our commerce in July because um, we had to move our people, we had to do something with the equipment, with the internet connection, we had to wait until they are safe and then it's not just safe physically, it's the psychological uh, aspect of that is very important but it only makes it even more important for us to be able to say that voice commerce as a free open source e-commerce software is open for everyone who wants to use it legally in their country we don't put a barrier to anyone you know um, and we welcome all the merchants and all the developers um, to use it and also for me personally because I wasn't in Ukraine when the war started it's important for me to appreciate and recognize the effort made by my colleagues, by my co-workers, by my friends in Ukraine that managed to complete this huge project pretty much under fire. There's been times and times... I mean, can I ask a question, Vadim? I, I'm sorry for cutting in, but this is just so incredible to me. Like. This is one of those things in life, right? Where you you have all the problems in the world until you have a real problem. Like I got a flat tire and I'm pissed off or my server went down and I'm stressed. But you guys are dealing with real problems. Yes. How do you even operate when it's like, you know, I'm stressed, you know, it's like, ah, oh, I didn't finish my year end and oh, uh, it's backed up a little bit. These are nothing. How do you actually operate? The worst thing is as that human you get beings? used to it. The first, for me personally, I mean, for Vlad, obviously, it's so much more difficult because he's actually in there, but, and for the rest of my team, pretty much, um, except for those who went outside of the country. But for me personally, the first few weeks were the hardest. Uh, your brain doesn't work, uh, it, just you're overwhelmed with emotion, and you just check the news, you just check on your close ones, on your friends, family, and it's a constant vicious cycle, you just keep doing that. You don't sleep, you don't eat, you just do that. News, check if they're alive, news, check if they're alive. But then um, the necessity of life cuts in and you think, okay, well, God, I've got some bills to pay. I've got to do something. Clients are waiting. Clients were very understandable and the community of first commerce, they were very understandable as well. Um, we said openly that things were delayed because of war and uh, well everyone understood that but then I guess the scariest thing is that you get used to that you get used to reports of so many missiles that hit the city of Kharkiv where almost two million people lived before the war hit it every day every night every day um, then you hear of people bomb well not people <coughs> of them bombing Kiev or Oviv or anything else and then you hear um, like I had one of my classmates killed recently in a missile attack uh, onto a mall in, in a place called Kremenchuk 
just two weeks ago. She was there by accident. Um, and they couldn't really... Yeah, well, <laughs> it's not for this interview really. But you get used to these things and you you take them as a fact of life, as normal. And that's terrible because it should not be normal, really. That's it's, how you. That's how you. That's horrifying. how you survive. That's that's how your brain works. That's how humans get. Mm, that's how humans move on and achieve things. I mean, sure, the the mind's capable of normalizing it, but but it doesn't make it any less sad, or or devastating. What would you I like mean, to tell all, David about just, your day, for example? What your day is like. Uh, <laughs> if you will open a photo there, you may well almost easily recognize me. <laughs> so it was before my second contusion. Uh, it was before I went to hospital. But after the second contusion, I have to leave uh, from territorial defense. I was part of territorial defense in Ukraine. Uh, it's, and then. How long ago was that? Uh, for me, it was for two months. I was there, and after the second contusion, I went to hospital for well a couple of weeks. So this, but this is all since the invasion began. This is recent. Yeah, it history. was from um, twenty seven or twenty nine of February. So it was not like day day number one. So it was in few days, like twenty twenty seven and twenty eight. So si si since then, uh, I go to territorial defense, then some actions happen, <laughs> and now I just do some volunteer job. Do you carry any injuries with you from, from your time? Uh, it was actually uh, a mine, so I was injured everywhere. It's multiple damage. That That is incredible. And then... And then after being in literally in the middle of a war, you're still somehow related to the ongoing development of OS commerce in the Why kind not? of in the middle of all this. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so it's, it's 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 independent things. <laughs> I I just don't even understand. There's so much here for maybe another discussion if you guys want to come back another time because there's just such a fascinating story there of of. I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, compartmentalizing things going on, an incredible amount of will and determination, and it's just uh, it's just inspiring. I doubt I will ever speak to many other people on this vlogcast uh, that have gone through anything like what you've gone through. You've put together an impressive project of business while defending your country, and I just you have you have all of my respect. So uh, the the main uh, answer is. We have to fight, but we also have to do business. So we have to split our time. <laughs> it's about time management, right? <laughs> oh my God. Time management and everything, even when there's missiles involved. Uh, it's just crazy to me. Um, I, I don't know how to, to segue, how to segue that, but I just want to say that I, I, I would speak on behalf of, I'm sure, our viewers and just say that it's an sounds like an absolutely incredible job and it's just part of the legacy of the uh, of OS commerce and the relaunch that uh, you've done this in such incredibly averse conditions David I've just sent you a link to a local newspaper here which shows you the place where Vlad is currently sitting how it looked just a few months ago it's it's unbelievable. That's exactly the house. Way so basically the other part of the house still looks a bit similar to that. <laughs> so wait, Vlad, are you saying this is where you're sitting? Yes, exactly. I mean, uh, I don't even know what to say. Like some of the dig, you, you see the bricks, the the bricks on the wall behind him. <laughs> some of them were blown away by the explosion, so he glued them back in. <laughs> just, just a couple so, days so ago, actually. You wouldn't even know, like, wh where's your upstairs? Like, in the picture, there's no upstairs. Like, it's just the front half of your house is missing. Uh, yes, half of house has been destroyed, and yes. <laughs> but the office is still there, see? <laughs> Very conveniently. Yeah, uh, uh, half I... of office yet, yet okay. Uh, it's actually uh, rebuilt. 
already and also all kids rooms are fine it's funny but no one kids room was damaged so this is only two room uh well not two room but three rooms what was not damaged <laughs> i just i i just i can't even it's very difficult to have an interaction when this is absolutely blowing my mind with the adversity that you've that you've gone through and you're sitting there with a smile on your face and i mean like your 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 office there where you're sitting you wouldn't even know you know like i guess you you've you tidied it all up and you've you've gotten it you've got it together i i mean that's what it seems like wow wow Vlad, you have, uh, I just don't know what to say other than you ha I have tremendous respect for you and, uh, and how you've continued functioning in, in what is effectively a ridiculous, impossible environment that nobody should ever be forced to go through. You're doing incredible. And so the big thing with OS Commerce back in the day, you know, one of the secret reasons why it was popular at the start was the OS part of it, which yes. open source, it was free. Is, is, the, is there still a free version of the new one? Uh, yes, exactly. It's free version of OS Commerce uh, version 4. And also, uh, together to uh, Core, we added uh, what we call App Shop. And inside of the App Shop, we have a lot of modules or extensions what are also free of charge. And why we added, uh, so even uh, we, are uh, as OS Commerce holder, we put everything not to a core, but put uh, to some extensions to support system, to um, allow clients set up uh, not just minimum version, but enough to run business and don't take uh, megabytes of code they will never use so if they want to update it oh. they don't need to use some third party they will use uh in the beginning of course uh modules from OS commerce so OS commerce made modules OS commerce made extensions but download on demand so don't need to keep a lot don't need to waste uh disk space or make it slower because of uh, too many extensions. Run, if you need yeah. something, go to so, up and set up free of charge, that's it. So Vlad, what you're saying, what I'm hearing is it's not, one of the principles behind the architecture of it is it's not bloated. It's more like by default, it's a minimal framework and then turn on what you need to keep it running lean and quickly. Is that is that one of the principles behind it? Uh, yes, but it's not like minimum minimum. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit above minimum, like uh, 15, 20 percent. Okay. So if I was to put you guys on the spot and ask maybe like, what's, what's three really good use cases for the upgrade? Maybe three things the new version can handle really well, like problems that the old one were, this was a big problem that you guys have really solved in a very definitive way. Okay, absolutely. Here we go. First of all, it's the server software. All the old OS Commerce installations they run on the previous, well, are obsolete. Those versions of server software which isn't supported anymore, they need to, they need to be deinstalled. They need to be gone. And the hosting providers they keep pushing merchants to do that. You either upgrade or you go. We hear that story every day, every week, every month, constantly. <clears throat> so the new version obviously resolves that. Uh, the uh, the new uh, server software is supported is safer is secure is faster it's how it should be so first of all second of all um, think about an average middle-sized shop business they want to do something they want to change banners they want to change texts they want to move things around they want to add content pages they want to add landing pages they want to change um, email texts for example that go to the users when they make an order how do they do it in the old OS commerce? Well, they either learn the code, which is cool, but it's not re real, really, for a business owner, or let's say it doesn't happen very often, or they have to hire someone. In the new version, they just go into the back end and edit all of this through the back end, through a very visual style editor themselves. 
So um, whatever they need to change, if it's relatively <coughs> minor, if it's design, if it's content, um, they can do it themselves. So any experiment they cool. have. Vadim, you know, is that like a drag and drop thing, or how does that work? Drag and drop, yes, of course. But it's not just that. It's the um, how it's done. Um, you can definitely see this in the demo, or we can give you another session and demonstrate it to you. But the, the point is, idea to market cycle shortens dramatically. They can implement the change, see how it works, revert it back, or keep using it instantaneously. Well, pretty much instantaneously. Within an hour, they'll have a change on their live website up and running. They don't like it, they revert back to the previous version of the design template, job done. No need to wait for the designer, no need to wait for the developer, no need for any anything of that. Therefore, business owners are in charge. Same thing for the designers and developers. It's much cheaper, faster means cheaper, doesn't it, for them to implement change yeah. if a business owner asks, employs them to do something. So those design agencies, those development agencies from all over the world, they get a tool, a toolkit, which is cheap to use, really. If you compare how much time it would take to implement um, an online shop in Magento, for example, to the new OS Commerce, I'm pretty sure you'll see that OS Commerce at least two times, if not three times, faster to implement and therefore cheaper. That's it. It's the simple economy, isn't it? And then, of course, the third thing, you asked for three things, but probably we could talk about hundreds. The third one is mobile and SEO friendly straight out of the box. Um, you install it, it's there, it does all the on-site uh, search engine optimization itself. You can, you, again, you have full control over everything you can possibly think of, including image file names. Or uh, if you name a product, it, you can store the old URL in the redirects and you don't lose it, for example. And there are so many other things there. And of course, it's mobile friendly. It's fast. Google loves it. It's always in the green, you know, the page speed monitor. And um, those on-site search engine optimization tasks are taken care of by the system itself. There you go. <laughs> that was a thorough answer. And you know what it sounds like when I'm listening? I, I'll just give, I'll, I'll cherry pick one thing you said. It's like when the URLs change, because when you relaunch your website, they will change. And Google links to the previous page, like shoes.com slash redshoes.htm. It's the old page where you had your red shoes. Well, if you just relaunch a site, you don't 404 that link. Google doesn't know where that product went. And effectively your search engine benefit goes out the window. But what I'm hearing from you then is the, the, these accrued lessons over many years of OS commerce, it's just a lot of under the hood optimizations and improvements from the lessons learned on the previous version. Am I from the sound of it? So yes, exactly. You say absolutely correct. It's all, it's all for business, okay, cool. you know, um, for business of the merchants, for business of the developers. Uh, we are very business minded people. We don't do something for the sake of doing it. We do it because our experience and our understanding tells us so. So if there is a feature in the new OS Commerce, or if there is no feature in the new OS Commerce, there is a reason for that. There is always a, re a reason for that. And it means that one of those thousands of online shops that we developed ourselves did have it or didn't have it for a particular reason. And we learned a lot on our way from probably the best advisors from business owners themselves. So one of the things I want to talk about then, kind of related to what we we're just speaking about there, is the, these improvements and changes. But as it, when you're making a change with open source software, it's possible to, or at least historically, it was possible to break it. Like I, back in the day, 20 years ago, I was, you know, administrating my own free BSD server. And I assure you, I was very good at breaking it. Uh, and it was free BSD. It was, it was open. It was the same type of thing. It was, it was on me to deal with. And then I eventually started working with many years later, Rackspace, who, uh, if anybody follows that, they're known for very good support and that type of thing. So what support plans, if any, do you have to help people maintain and patch things as, as, an, as a need arises? We basically offer a number of commercial services to come along with, the, uh, with those commerce. We're here to make it a successful business, first of all for us, but not just for us, for the community. There is a massive OS commerce community, <clears throat> about 300,000 
members in that community and we're talking about a mixture of business owners or well business people and uh, designers developers consultants um, you can think of anyone really and um, we as Oris Commerce ourselves we offer a number of support packages and a number of standard services and an, um, any anything really in terms of customization we can customize it to any extent however we don't want to lock it to just us it's open for everyone we want it to make it a sustainable ecosystem for all the people firms companies who want to participate to be able to participate and earn good money off OS commerce so one of the challenges uh, that I think of when I think of open source software is just the environment and getting it installed, especially, you know, if I read like a, a Unix book, it just makes my blood pressure go up. You know, you need this module, you need this dependency. It's like, what's a dependency? Where do I get it? So I'm curious to know if and how you've made it easier for people who are not technical to run an open source platform. Have you addressed that? Uh, this is a really common question right now and we uh, check the situation on the market and as a solution for our client we created what we call a uh, host with OS commerce. So we provide free of charge one month uh, environment where you have everything. So you don't need to know about Linux, Unix or anything. You don't need to know anything about that. So you don't need to spend the time to uh, find hosting provider, set up, etc., etc. You just need to use it. So you go there, you register, we provide, we stop everything for you. And you go inside and check OS Commerce, not hosting. After one month's time, if you want to stay with OS Commerce, you move to paid, actually really cheap, paid service. If you want to host somewhere else, you take everything you build on this environment and take with you. That's it. And also, also, as for technique, it's a really good question, David. We took this into account and now system update done in the backend. So you don't need to do any uh, coding to update the system. You just click a button, update a core and core with you. Now, Vlad, is that just if it's in your environment or is that in any environment? Uh, this is on any environment, uh, but we suggest to use our environment uh, to start. So you may use our environment to learn what is OS Commerce and then you may decide stay on our environment and go somewhere else. It doesn't matter, updates available everywhere. Well, I, I know for sure there's a classic thing about open source versus hosted platforms, like something like a Shopify. And I'm very much of the, I want to own my own infrastructure. I've always leaned way more towards open source uh, than a remotely hosted platform where you can't truly really control anything. And I have to acknowledge that there are users out there that, you know, shouldn't be using platforms where they're responsible for running it. But then, but for people that are reasonably technically proficient, it was always a stress to know that things could break or, hey, I have to update my whatever it is, you know, to get it working. And so it sounds like you guys have gone a long way towards addressing that problem because that is one of the historical problems with open source software. Uh, the things are, this is a kind of hybrid. OS Commerce uh, version 4, it can work uh, both ways. So it can be an hosted solution and it can be a standalone solution. So uh, this is why on our environment we provide with uh, environment as such, but but we allow people uh, to have FTP there. We allow people to see uh, database, uh, no as such, no. <laughs> uh, so database FTP they can uh, take files with them. When we create everything, they can take all files with them, and more than that. We even have a special feature and this feature is actually to build installation from your copy of OS Commerce. So you go to host with OS Commerce, you set up your own copy, you play with this, you set up a payment, shipping, you upload your products, 
you do you done with few test orders test clients so on so on you apply with the design potentially so you are ready to go and you don't want to host the service commerce no problem you go to the back end you click create installation download zip file take this installation go somewhere else upload this zip file to fresh new uh, hosting environment and do installation like you download it from OS Commerce, but with your setting, with all work you done there. So as I'm listening to you guys, uh, one thing that's really becoming apparent to me here is the tremendous amount of planning, because you guys have addressed uh, administrative problems, for example, making the interface easier. You talked about making it easier to install with some server stuff. Uh, you also addressed, you know, lots of aggregated or uh, cumulative improvements that have happened over over many years. So, and additionally, the App Store, which allows people, if there is a hole in the functionality, for someone to come in and do something very custom to maybe make it do something really well that it doesn't do that well today. I'm curious to know, this obviously was a really big project. How many years has this taken you? And what, what are some of, some of the challenges or even lessons that you've learned along the way of rebuilding this very seminal platform? Well, it's a journey. Um, probably the length of it is half of my lifetime, pretty much. Because the first uh, e-commerce store we made in May 2002, and strangely enough, or funny enough, it was in Oise Commerce. And ever since then, pretty much, that's the only thing that we've been doing, building e-commerce stores. And all the knowledge, all the experience, all the skill, it is what we've put in those 20 years that we accumulated. It is what we've put into the new version of OS Commerce. And the challenges, of course, there were a few technical challenges, of course, there were a few administrative cha challenges and uh, whatever else you can think of. But the biggest challenges, perhaps, are always personal challenges. For me, for me, for example, the biggest personal challenge was to learn to let go, to understand, to really take it into my heart that you can't make something that everyone will like, that you can't really mm, follow everyone's request, because then you will lose where you're going to. You'll be just pushed off your way. And I've learned that from that guy in the yellow and blue t-shirt from Blood, because he seems to be better at grasping this target and staying on the target. For me, I would listen more and I would try to make everyone happy, and it's probably wrong. You need to really persuade um, your own, you, you really need to pursue your own goal, you, your own target, based on your gut instinct, based on your understanding of where and how you're going, what you're doing and then you will achieve success or not perhaps but it will be your it will be the only right way you can't do that if you allow other people to decide for you how and what you should be doing same thing with the new OS commerce you have it um, you have it now it's a fantastic new very feature rich system and it's there for taking it's free it's paid it's everything However, some people would prefer to stay with the old version, which is, well, which was great 20 years ago, and perhaps even 10, 15 years ago, but it's not anymore. It's not safe to use, it's laggy, it's buggy, it's old, it's nothing. However, you can't really expect for all people to want it, the new version. They will stick with the old one for no particular reason, because they just, not because there is any business sense in it, but because there is a piece of... Um, reminiscence, I guess, nostalgia, they think back 20 years ago, when they were 20 years younger, when the world, wo the world was slightly different, perhaps, when OS Commerce was great and was the number one solution in the world for e-commerce. But the thing is, they can't really sustain themselves on that belief. Something new needs to happen, something new needs to be there, and we are offering the new OS Commerce as a way for them to really turn their life, turn their business around and achieve certain success. To make it a mainstream e-commerce platform as it once was, but now it was in decline for so many years, but now there is a chance of this happening again. And that's 
we welcome everyone if they want to join us on this on this journey to a successful future. Th thank you for that, Vadim. And uh, Vlad, I'm curious about something because Vadim raised an interesting point, which is you know the compromise between making everyone happy and and not losing track of your vision. Or I think maybe I would rephrase that: uh, staying on staying on the core functionality and not not compromising in a way that weakens the things that are most critical for the platform to accomplish. So if Vadim looks to you to make sure that that doesn't happen, then how do you do that? Uh, thank you, Vadim, for some good words. And as Vadim said, uh, in some cases, in some cases, uh, people don't take into account current needs. So, like Pink Floyd say, uh, the grass was green and the sweet was sweeter. And uh, as everyone knows, it's not a true. Uh, and the answer to your question is really simple. Uh, you should understand what you do and you should believe in what you do. Uh, I have a really big experience. So, I personally lead more than 3,000 uh, projects. And I know, I know, uh, in the end of the store, if you do everything correct, and if you have a vision of how project should be, in the end, it will be success. So, experience, experience, and experience, that's it. And of course, learning, learning, learning what people need right now, what people are... need to have and what modern um, direction is. So, some time ago, like 20 years ago, spam was not a problem, right? Now it's even maybe criminal, so on, so on. So everything changed, everything changed. And uh, we should take this into account. So it's, it sounds like, it sounds like two things, really. It's, so you personally led over 3,000 projects, you have the knowledge, but there's another element to it which is very hard, which is the ability to say no to people, to, the, to, to their benefit, right? And that's something that personally I struggle with. I am not a, an overly uh, confrontational person, nor am I suggesting that you are either, but I think it sounds like you have the ability based on your experience, not just to realize what needs to be done, but to tell a client sometimes, no, this is not in your best interest, or no, we should, we should do this instead. Absolutely, that's what we're good at. That what differs us from, um, as an e-commerce agency, that is what differs us from many others. We're not shy of telling the truth to clients based on our understanding of what would be best for them. And then, um, this is what they value, this is what they like. Uh, very few would be offended by that, very many would compliment us and would say that this is exactly what they were looking for, but no one would give it to them. Uh, exactly. Why hire an expert if you're not going to listen to them? Which, by the way, some people actually will do. Uh, <laughs> but it's best if you're hiring an expert for something. I mean, you hired them for a reason. So take their advice, learn how, uh, I'm just ranting at the camera here, but sometimes people do have to learn how to take advice. And, and as business owners or people that are working with people, sometimes we have to find the way to help people understand why that's better for them. So it might be reframing a discussion so that the person understands better why it's to their benefit. But sometime, but sometime, uh, uh, it even became strange uh, why? So sometimes we even may uh, lose a little bit in terms of money <laughs> when we say no. <laughs> but for us, it's much more important in the end of the story to receive correct result than earn some money. Because if we will lose now, it is really big chance that we will get those money uh, later on. So this is why we're so 22 at the years term. in business and yeah, e-commerce e was not our first project. <laughs> exactly. That, exactly. Well, this has been some great advice. Now, I'm curious to know if people, 
I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, everybody can find the OS Commerce website, but I want to give you guys the opportunity, if people want to find out more about OS Commerce and specifically version four, and perhaps if they want to demo it or anything like that, what can they do? What, what, what's your advice? Well, the best advice is to go to the oscommerce.com website. There is a link to the demo version. There is, as of tomorrow, there's going to be a link to download the version onto the server or first time in the OS Commerce history to have it installed onto an OS Commerce server. So you don't have to do it yourself anymore. You can have this done automatically for you. You do this and you start to play with it, poke it, do whatever you like with it. There is a Wikipedia style website that describes the functionality of OS Commerce as well. And of course there is this fantastic forum where hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people are there to discuss how to use OS Commerce. What's the best practice? If you need help, they will help you. Wonderful. Wonderful. I wanted to thank you both for joining and maybe I can have you on again sometime in the future and you can talk about the development because I'm very curious. At this point, it sounds like what you need and you alluded this to earlier is you had said the hardest point may be in the future. Well, when you get thousands of users stress testing this platform, that's when you're going to have all the things come up that you can improve on. And it sounds like you're at maybe the most exciting part of the journey so far. Yes, we are very much um, looking forward to it. It's going to be a tough, perhaps, but such a pleasant personally for me, for example, experience, because I want to see how the product that all of our team pretty much has been working on for so much time is out there helping real people, helping real businesses improve generate more, as I said, sell better, sell cheaper, deliver faster, process faster, and um, earn money. And that's that's amazing because we, we always wanted to give the world a very nice, very capable tool that they can use. And we are just doing it now. Wonderful. Well, Vadim and Vlad, thank you both so much for joining today. Thank you, David. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, David, and thank you for your time. Thanks, guys.